Hi everybody, it's Roxana Hanna and we are going to get cooking. It's fall and it is chanterelle season in the Pacific Northwest. I was lucky enough to run into a chef friend of mine and he said, oh, I just have a whole bunch of chanterelles. Let me give you a bunch. And so he did. And so we're going to cook a really nice hearty fall dish with the chanterelles. So let me show you all of the things that we have on today's menu. First, we're just going to start from the bottom up. I have some cauliflower right here. I'm going to roast it. Okay, so I basically just have it, you know, chopped in chunks. Um, olive oil on the pan. I poured some olive oil, a little bit of salt on there. Pop it in the oven at 350 and just roast it. Okay. I also have some white beans. These are just cannellini beans. All right. I'm going to cook those up. They're already cooked. They're just from a can. I'll just heat them up, get them softer. And when the uh, cauliflower is done, what we're going to do is combine the cauliflower and the beans to make a really nice mash, like a mashed potato. I also have some um, beef broth, okay, that we can add to help flavor that. Obviously, if you don't eat beef broth, use vegetable broth, right? If you want to make a nice mash with beans and cauliflower. Okay, so that's one thing. Then we have uh, filet mignon, okay? So I've got this filet mignon here. I'll sear it on both sides, on all the sides, because they're pretty thick steaks. I'll sear them, and then I'll let them finish cooking inside this pan in the oven on a lower temperature so that the outside, when the outside gets seared, you know, all the juices get seared inside and then I can pop this because this all clad pan can withstand those high temperatures which is why I love all clad. You can just pop it in the oven and then the oven will finish cooking this. Okay? Then we have the chanterelles. Alright? So here I have them sliced and they're, I mean, they're just a beautiful, beautiful thing. They're just these are white and these have dried up a little. I've had them since uh, the weekend. Uh, so today's Thursday. I've had them about four days. And um, they were freshly picked. So they've just been drying slowly in my house. This is the inside. This is a white chanterelle. That's what they look like. Beautiful. Very delicate tasting. Mild flavor. Many times people cook with, you know, butter and cream, but we're not using butter and cream in the slow carb diet. Uh, you can use ghee. Now ghee would be great because ghee has a fabulous flavor, except I don't have any on hand. <laughs> so I'm not going to cook with ghee because I don't have any. So I'm going to instead, I decided, well, how about I try something different, right? I thought I'd go ahead and try out this, uh, can you see, walnut oil. It's a roasted walnut oil. I've never cooked with a roasted walnut oil. So that is going to be the main oil flavoring throughout all these dishes. So I'm going to cook the chanterelles in olive oil instead of butter. Now, don't get me wrong, butter is the best with, you know, sauteed mushrooms. But you can still make a really, really tasty dish simply with sautéing mushrooms. Chanterelles have their own really nice delicate flavor, kind of sweet. So I, I know that they're going to taste great with the, the roasted walnut oil. While that's happening, all that's happening, we have these thinly sliced yellow onions that with the walnut oil, again, I'm going to uh, sauté and caramelize them. Uh, just sprinkle them with a little bit of salt. Let them cook nice and slow until they get a nice golden color. So what we'll have is we'll have a filet mignon on top of a roasted cauliflower flour, a bean puree. We'll have some, um, some beef broth that we'll, we'll cook inside the pan after the, the filet mignon is done so that the beef broth can grab the, um, the, the flavorings from what the filet mignon left and we'll make a nice sauce. We'll have the chanterelles that um, have taken their sweet time cooking. We'll put the chanterelles on top of the uh, filet mignon. We'll have some caramelized onions on there also because those are sweet. So, oh, and of course, you know, just some nice little flavorings for kind of a hearty, warm dish like this. I just sliced this uh, celery super thin, sliced it on the axis, nice and thin, 
little pieces. Also, we'll have some fresh parsley, fresh Italian parsley, and we'll just kind of sprinkle those over the whole dish uh, just to add a light, crisp, fresh, cool flavor to the warm dish. And that is gonna be your slow carb meal. Now, if you're doing the paleo diet, um, you can't use salt. And uh, you, I'm pretty sure you can use walnut oil because you can use any of the oils that aren't processed. And walnuts is natural. Um, and that's, that's it. If there are any other ingredients that I throw in when I'm cooking and just feel like it, I'll, I'll list those for you as well. But um, okay, so let's get So cooking. we have the cauliflower roasting in the oven. We have the uh, filet mignon that has been seared on all sides. That's popped in the oven as well. And we have the chanterelles that are tossed in the walnut oil, tossed with a dash of celery seed and some herbs de Provence. So I'm just gonna saute those. While those are sauteing, I'm gonna show you how we are coming along with our caramelizing of the onions. So I bring it down to a really low temperature and slowly cook the um, onions to get them nice and caramelized. Again, they have a sprinkling of salt on them. We have the chanterelles cooking right now. Uh, and um, I might end up tossing a little bit of beef broth into either one of these. I like to let the onions caramelize before I add any liquid because I don't want the onions to boil in the liquid. If I add the broth to that, I'll do it at the very end just to get some extra color and to get some extra flavor because the oil that's cooking in, uh, the onions that are cooking in that oil right now, that oil is becoming sort of a caramelized onion flavor now. So I kind of want to preserve that oil and maybe use it with the broth to, to help a rich in a sauce. So we'll see. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. <laughs> I'll let you know. I better keep my eye on these chanterelles because they'll cook fast. And I'll be right back with you. All right, so we are halfway done with our cooking. The cauliflower roasted 40 minutes. I threw it in the cuisine art with the blade, and I'm just I'm just blending now. Blending, okay. So that's getting mushed up. I put the roasted cauliflower in here. I poured maybe oh you know half half a cup, a fourth a cup of broth in there because it it needs it to to mush around. I changed the plans a little bit with the chanterelles. So let me show you what I did. I added the broth to the uh, chanterelle, I added the broth to the caramelized onions, and then, I don't know if it's, you can even see it, no, I don't think so, but I added in some green peppercorns. Green peppercorns are a little sweeter, they're light, and the contrast of color with the little flecks of green in there will make it look pretty. So those are slowly cooking down. Oh yeah, I also tossed in a couple splashes of um, white wine vinegar. The vinegar in there will give it a nice flavor. I put in some more beef broth. So I'm just letting this cook until it gets um, just a little thicker. You know, I mean, cream sauce and butter to die for. But we're going on the healthier side, so we're not gonna do that and we're still gonna make it taste great. So let me finish cooking this mash. I'm gonna add the beans, we'll do that together right now while these chanterelles and onions are cooking together. I have the heat on the chanterelles and the onions. I have the heat on uh, like a, a, a low. Not, it's simmering gently, simmering gently. Okay, let's add these beans. Add more broth. It holds with a fork just fine, so splat. So it's not so thin that it falls through a fork, right? You don't want to add, add too much broth. Tastes good. Could use some more seasonings, a few more spices. So I'll spice it up. So it's kind of porridge consistency. The flavor is great because that roasted cauliflower flavor really comes through. <coughs> Excuse me. And what's nice about it is you want it to be kind of creamy like this because it's going to be underneath the filet mignon. And since we're not using cream in our mushroom onion sauce, 
you know, this is kind of the cream. We're gonna have this over the top. It's gonna be great. So I'm gonna spice this up a little bit. Um, not a lot though, because I want a I want a mellow flavor. So I'll just put um, I'll just put a little bit more salt, <clears throat> some thyme, some ground thyme, so that it's um, I'm using ground thyme instead of my dried herbs here that I, that I've been using, right? I'm going to use the ground thyme because this is a smooth texture, texture, and I just want to keep that smooth consistency with this. These um, caramelized onions and chanterelles are like gorgeous. Let me show you how pretty this this color. Um, ah, so zippy. Can you see that? Yeah. Well, it kind of looks mushy, but whatever. It's going to be great. Yeah. So um, I'll be right back with the final plating. We are finally done with our dish. Let me show you the finished product. Okay, there you go. Can you see that? We have the cauliflower mash on the bottom, cauliflower bean mash. We have the filet mignon in the center somewhere piled all over the filet mignon, our caramelized onions and white chanterelles. We have some parsley and some thin slices of celery to finish off the flavor just right. We have the juices that have come ar down around here uh, from the pan drippings after I pulled the filet mignon out of the oven. Um, of course, some of the juices seeped out, poured that on top. It's going to be a fabulous, look at how beautiful this gorgeous fall dish is. Delicious. Hope you enjoy. This is Roxana Hanna. Thank you again for joining me.